Hello everyone, my name is Francesca Duval and I'm from Alchemist Farm in Northern California. We are a humane quail and chicken hatchery and today I'm here to talk to you about quail. So our ideas of what a bird should have isn't necessarily what this particular bird needs to thrive and survive. There's many different types of quail out there, different sizes and shapes. I can only speak about what I work with and what I know here on the farm, which is the jumbo caternix which will lay you all different interesting speckled colored eggs. And what's really fun about these speckled eggs is that the hen that lays these eggs will always lay the same-ish pattern on her eggs. This one that kind of looks like the earth, this quail will always lay these really large exaggerated speckles on it. While this quail, for instance, lays smaller speckles on her egg and she will always do this pattern. It's so fun to connect with your food that way and connect with animals in that way. Which bird is specifically laying what, naming that bird, thanking that bird, if you're wanting to connect with them in that way. One reason why I'm so excited about connecting with Kellogg and their homesteading network is that I really feel like they're empowering all of us to understand about how to close the loops in our lives, how to be able to garden better, how to help our pollinators, how to keep bees, how to keep quail or chicken or different species of animals in your life to bring richness so that you can have everything that you need, like a, like a victory garden, a victory farm. I feel like a lot of us have gotten away from that, but in bringing in these kind of animals into our life, we can reconnect with that. The traditions of the past that were so important that um, can really be helpful for us in this day and age too. So we work with the Caternix quail that are, these ones are jumbo, so they'll lay a large egg. We also work with these blue egg laying quail. The texture of these eggs, I wish you could touch through the screen and feel. It's almost like they're sandpapery. It doesn't hurt the bird when they're laid, but it feels so cool. Getting to work with so many different types of eggs here on the farm, we get to really feel uh, the smoothness of a certain breed of chicken egg versus the like powderiness. And then in this case, the very smoothness of these to the kind of sandpapery texture of these. Every egg is such a delight and a treat to be able to collect each day and uh, enjoy with your family. I find that this size of egg, the quail egg, uh, three of these eggs equals one chicken egg, is the perfect size for little kids. Little hands to be excited about eating some protein, helping out with cooking, opening up the egg and seeing what's inside, wondering if you got a double yolk or not if a large egg uh, came in that day. Keeping them on the countertop is just, they're so beautiful and so inviting to eat. Uh, it's a great way to help connect kids and adults alike with their food. So we talked a little bit about what adults need to be able to feel safe in their setup. And in that setup, you always wanna make sure they have access to clean water and clean food. There's many different types of feeders depending on the setup that you have. And I always like to lean on giving the animals automatic feeders, automatic waterers. So if I'm sick one day or something happens and I can't get out there, the animals are always getting the best. And that takes time and some money to invest in infrastructure, but at least you know they're always taken care of. If it's a really hot day and a person forgot to give the quail or the chickens water, that could be a really devastating situation because they could die of thirst. So you wanna make sure that you're doing right by your animals and setting up all the proper infrastructure even before you get them. A lot of people get excited and they'll bring an animal home and they wonder, ah, what kind of a setup am I gonna put them in? So I always recommend getting the setups before. So three sides, low roof, a really high roof, and lots of brush, and making sure predators can't look in on them. Those are the tickets for adults. Let's talk about chicks. Quail chicks are so fragile and so small, and quite possibly the cutest chicks you will ever see. The little sounds they make are totally different than chicken chicks. I don't have any fresh hatchlings right now to show you, perhaps in a later video. Um, their legs are very small and they are very fragile. The first week of life, you have to be pretty careful when you're brooding fresh babies. I always recommend getting hatching eggs over quail chicks in the mail if you can help it because the hatching eggs are just a much safer way to transport the chicks to you and then you can hatch them yourself and be very careful as you put them in the brooder. 
when we ship out quail chicks, we have to raise them up for a little while before they can go because that first week is just ah, such, a, such a precious time where you really have to baby them. A quail brooder is something that has a lot of space, that's what they would like, and then lots and lots of heat. I don't like those, those plate brooders that create heat, even though they are safer from a fire hazard perspective, because those plates make it so they all bunch underneath and they all climb on top of each other and some can get smothered as babies. So I favor really large heat lamps. I have a really large brooder that's 10 feet long by four feet deep and I can put as many as 200 quail chicks in there. And I put four really large heat lamps in there and turn them on, especially during the night. During the day, I'll usually keep only one or two on in that first week to keep that temperature regulated for them. If you have the ability to put an automatic thermometer in there that turns the lights on and off when the um, temperature hits a certain amount, that's even better. But if you don't, you can just peek in and look and see what the quail's behavior is like. This goes for chicken chicks too. If the quails are clumping up, you know they need more heat. If they're scattered about and laying really low or panting, then they need less heat. All you have to do is just open the lid on your brooder, let some fresh air in, turn off the heat lamp, and they'll be okay. So heat is number one, and spread out heat so they're not clumping up. I like to grind up their grain that they get and make sure to put marbles or rocks in their waterers because they're so small. If they go into the waterer, sometimes they can't get out and they drown, and we don't want that to happen to your quail. So, rocks in the waterers, ground up grain, lots of spread out heat, and I like to put pine shavings down. A lot of people have many different ideas about what kind of bedding or substrate to put in the brooders, but I've never had any issues with sprout a leg or um, chicks having uneven footing if there's a nice big layer of pine shavings in there. They kind of bumble about, and if anything, I think that it helps their hips develop well. Some people put paper towels down, newspaper shavings and shreddings, whatever you have available. All of that makes really good compost for the garden after you're done. If you have a compost pile, you can just put it out. All that rich nitrogen from the, from the quail. And then I'm happy to connect with you all. If you have any extra questions over a Q&A, or you could send extra questions to Kellogg and I'll get back to you. Hope you have a good day and I hope that you want to bring quail into your life because I think they're really special.